My sister's sudden passing led to a jaw-dropping revelation from her husband at the funeral. Davina, there's something I need to tell you about Nayim. Thus voice trembled as he spoke, his eyes hollow and red-rimmed. We stood in the back of the reception hall, the echoes of my sister, Nayim's funeral service still lingering in the air. The room basked with the hushed conversations of grieving friends and family. Little did I know the secret Duff was about to reveal would shatter our understanding of Nayim's sudden passing and change everything we thought we knew. Nayim and I were more than sisters. We were best friends. Growing up, we shared everything from our hopes and dreams to our fears and insecurities. Nayim was the more outgoing and adventurous one, while I was the quiet, introspective type. Despite our differences, we were inseparable. She was my rock, and I was hers. When Nayim met Duff, I was initially skeptical. He was quiet and reserved, almost the opposite of my vibrant sister. But as I got to know him, I saw how deeply he loved her. Their relationship blossomed, and before long, they were engaged. Their wedding was a beautiful celebration of love, surrounded by friends and family. It seemed like the beginning of a fairy tale life together. Nyan's death came out of nowhere. One day, she was her usual energetic self, planning for the future with Duff and dreaming about the children they hoped to have. The next, she was gone. It started with a headache that quickly turned into something much worse. Within hours, she was in the hospital, slipping away from us despite the doctor's best efforts. They said it was an aneurysm, something no one could have predicted. Duff was by her side the entire time, his face a mask of anguish as he held her hand, whispering words of love and encouragement. When she finally passed, the shock was overwhelming. We were all left grappling with the sudden, incomprehensible loss of someone so full of life. Nyan's funeral was held on a cold, overcast day. The church was filled with flowers and photographs of Nyan, capturing moments of her life that we all cherished. The eulogies were heartfelt, each speaker sharing stories of Nyan's kindness, bravery, and the joy she brought to everyone she met. Thus sat in the front row, his face etched with sorrow. He looked like a man who had aged years in just a few days. After the service, we moved to the reception hall, where people could share their memories and find solace in each other's company. It was there that Duff approached me, his eyes haunted by a secret he had been carrying. Favina, there's something I need to tell you about Nyam. Duff repeated, his voice breaking. I could see the torment in his eyes, and I knew whatever he was about to say was tearing him apart. What is it, Duff? I asked, my heart pounding in my chest. He took a deep breath, his hands trembling. Nyam didn't die from an aneurysm. I stared at him, confused. What do you mean? Of course she did. We all saw how quickly it happened. Thuff shook his head, tears streaming down his face. No, Davina, someone did this to her. I found out she was poisoned. The room seemed to spin around me. Poisoned? Who would do something like that? Why? I don't know, he admitted, his voice filled with anguish. But I've been trying to find out. I didn't want to say anything without proof, but I can't keep this to myself any longer. Thus confession turned our world upside down. We went to the police and shared his suspicions. Initially, they were skeptical, but a toxicology report from Nyan's autopsy revealed the presence of a rare and deadly poison. The investigation was officially reopened, and our quiet community was thrust into a whirlwind of scrutiny and suspicion. The police began questioning everyone who had been close to Nyan, searching for any clues that could lead them to the person responsible. It was a painful and invasive process, but we were determined to find justice for Nyam. As the investigation progressed, secrets began to surface. Nyam had been receiving anonymous threatening letters for months before her death. Duff had found them hidden in her desk, detaining someone's obsession with her, someone who felt wronged by her. One name kept coming up during the investigation, Laura, Nyam's old college roommate. They had once been best friends, but their relationship had ended abruptly. Laura had always been jealous of Nyam's success and had been acting strangely in the months leading up to Nyam's death. The police brought Laura in for questioning. At first, she denied everything, but under pressure, she began to crack. She admitted to writing the letters, but insisted she had nothing to do with Nyam's death. However, further investigation revealed that Laura had access to the type of poison that had killed Nyam. Laura's obsession with Nyam had turned into a deadly vendetta. She had been poisoning Nyam's food and drinks for months, watching as her health deteriorated, enjoying the slow destruction of her once best friend. 
The realization that someone so close to us could do something so horrific was almost too much to bear. Laura was arrested and charged with Niam's murder. The trial was a media circus with reporters swarming the courthouse, eager for any new details. As we sat in the courtroom, listening to the evidence, the pain of losing Niam was compounded by the betrayal of someone we had once trusted. Duff testified about the letters and the months of suspicion and fear. His grief was palpable, and it was clear that he had been haunted by the knowledge that someone had deliberately taken Niam from us. The jury found Laura guilty, and she was sentenced to life in prison. After the trial, we tried to pick up the pieces of our shattered lives. The grief of losing Niam was always there, but now it was accompanied by a sense of justice. We had found the person responsible, but it didn't bring Niam back. It didn't erase the pain. Thuff and I leaned on each other for support. Our shared loss created a bond that helped us navigate the difficult days ahead. We spent hours talking about Niam, sharing memories, and finding comfort in the love we both had for her. As the years passed, the pain of losing Niam began to soften, replaced by the determination to honor her memory. Thuff and I started a foundation in her name, dedicated to helping others who were going through similar experiences. It was a way to channel our grief into something positive to create a legacy that Niam would have been proud of. The foundation became a beacon of hope for many, providing support and resources for families affected by violence and illness. It gave us a sense of purpose, a way to keep Niam's spirit alive. A year after that fateful confession, I found myself standing on a beach, much like the one where my life had changed forever. But this time, I was alone, and it was a symbol of my newfound strength and independence. I had come a long way from the terrified sister who had fled from the unbearable truth. I had faced my fears, uncovered the truth, and found the courage to move forward. I knew that I would always carry the scars of that experience, but they no longer defined me. Nyan's death was a tragedy that changed our lives forever. The shocking revelation of her murder left us reeling, but it also brought us closer together. Through our shared pain, we found a way to honor her memory and create something beautiful out of the darkness. Grief is a journey, one that we continue to navigate every day. But through it all, we hold on to the love we had for Niam, the memories that keep her spirit alive, and the hope that we can make a difference in the lives of others. Niam's story is a reminder that even in the face of unimaginable loss, there is always a way to find light in the darkness. Her legacy lives on through the foundation, through the lives we've touched and through the love that will never fade. As I stand here today, looking out at the sun setting over the horizon, I feel a sense of peace. Niam's light may have been extinguished, but her spirit continues to shine, guiding us through the darkest of times. And that is something worth celebrating.